Hello, beautiful souls. Happy Monday. It was a rough weekend. We have a lot happening and it does take some focus. I want to talk about that just for a minute. So um, we have lots of events, lots of events. I'm not going to touch on them all. You are awake, uh, walking around the planet. You're pretty aware of them. I don't need to point them out to you. I want to point out though, that us being alive on the planet right now, as she, Mother Earth, has settled into her ascension, and we have been invited to remain alive while she's ascending and not have an extinction event, which is what normally accompanies a planet's ascension. So, yeah, it's going to get rough. It's going to be rough. It's going to be bumpy. There are topographical landmass changes that have to occur, cleansings that have to occur. Am I saying that all these people, uh, animals, communities, states are deserving of what's happening? No, I, they have my prayers and I'm sending lots of love and lots of healing energy that way. It's just a byproduct of this time. It really is. There are things that need to change. There are things that need to end. There are things that need to begin. And in order to do so, a lot of changes have to occur in a short amount of time. We are fulfilling a prophecy and we are making history, universe history. Has never been done successfully before. I don't know that it's ever been attempted because a collective consciousness had to be a certain level in order for it to even be an option. And we did that. We did that. And we continue to do that. So I'm asking you to show up every day for yourself. Show up for yourself. Absolutely, I want you to. <laughs> Sorry, I had a spider drop in a web. <laughs> um, so I ask you to show up for yourself. And what do I mean by that? I want you to focus on you being in the, in the healthiest state of readiness because there's a lot coming at us, right? So you got to hydrate. You got to drink good, clean water, alive water, more than you normally do because there's a lot of light codes coming in. There's a lot of DNA activation taking place from carbon to crystalline and water facilitates that along with your electrolytes. So definitely boost that. I always recommend Celtic sea salt or Himalayan sea salt, a few drops under your tongue, let it dissolve and it starts to balance your electrolytes that you need. The energy that we use, we go through our electrolytes pretty quickly and we have to maintain maintain that on a daily basis. If you have the ability to take Epsom salt baths, do that. It will help you detox a lot of what needs to be purged from your physical form so that you can continue to ascend. Um, ground, get your feet on the ground, go take a walk in nature. If you have get a break and you're having to work and you're not working outside, take your shoes off. <laughs> Put them on the ground for five minutes. It will help you. I promise. Um, meditate. Meditation doesn't have to be, you know, sitting in the lotus position um, for hours on end. There are a lot of fairy lineage people. We lovingly call them fairy minded because they, they don't focus very well. They are ooh, squirrel, you know, that kind of thing. So if you can focus on something that brings you joy in a meditative state, and that means like when you're focused on this thing, this event, this, this practice, time goes by without you being aware of it, that's meditative state. So it could be painting, it could be singing, it could be dancing, it could be gardening, it could be any of that. It could be taking a walk in nature. That can be your meditation. Just go with the intention of staying in the now moment. You're not focusing on the grocery list. You're not thinking about the things you got to do at home. You're not thinking about all the errands you need to run. You're not thinking about everybody else. You're thinking about you. You're listening to the inner voice. You're allowing healing to come in. This is what I want you to do. This is my heartfelt plea so that you can be better grounded. When you're grounded, 
things that are off, things that don't resonate with you are much easier to determine because you're grounded in your center. And I want you to really focus each day that you make decisions, each and every decision. Does this align me closer to source creator or does this pull me away? And if you can't answer that, then don't make that decision yet. Think about it. It really is that simple or that complicated, however you want to approach that. So we're going to continue with the covering of the divine light rays. Today, I'm going to give you the fourth divine light ray, and that is the ray of harmony with Archangel Gabriel. So coming up, I will be doing the fifth ray and then the sixth and seventh rays throughout this week. And then there's a couple of adjunct ones that I'm going to add in there that I also found correlated really, really well that I thought should be um, included in this series. So again, fourth ray of harmony with Archangel Gabriel. He has the power to communicate God's source creator's will, also known for bringing in harmony and purification with his white flame, encouraging us with clarity, discipline, and order within our lives. The fourth ray of harmony comes to you now with the qualities of beauty, harmony, and balance. It empowers you to complete a spiritual initiation. If you have been feeling really more nervous or unsure about your spiritual relationship, your spiritual journey, what does that even mean? Call in Archangel Gabriel. You can receive activations, guidance, and clarity without having this angelic being right before you, right? You can receive it and you will receive it in the way that that is causing the least amount of harm or angst in your in your being. So it is more than likely going to be in a dream space. It can be in meditation. It can be in downloads via your clear ability. So claircognizant, clairsentient, you feel it in the body when you ask your questions. Um, clairfactient, you may get a smell, a sweet smell is a yes. A smell of a family member. They may have something to add, you know, like if grandpa, whoever was always smoking cigars and you smell a cigar and there's no one around you with a cigar, it's highly likely that that, that guide is there trying to clue you in because they can't connect with you without you inviting them. So if you do pick up on that, and that is something that you're aligned to do, you just call them in. Is that grandpa so-and-so? And you can have your, your spirit team confirm that this is a benevolent being, um, you know, not copycatting the energy signature of your grandpa, whatever, and then connect and see what comes in. There really isn't like, this is the, the crux of it for me. Uh, I was raised Catholic. I've been in on several different um, organized religions throughout my life, trying to find a place that felt like it resonated within my soul. And I never did, but I, I learned a lot in all. And in every single one, there is a massive amount of people showing up at the same time, same day with the earnest want to connect to source creator, God. And then when we connect with God, when we connect with source, when I connect with Mother Sophia, when I connect with the archangels, there are those that are in those same organized religions that want to um, throw judgment my way. Like, how dare you communicate with someone who's dead? Okay, well, death is an illusion. We're all energy. We just transform from matter to formless or back to a different form. Energy can't be destroyed. It only gets transformed. And I believe you go to church under the pretense of communicating with God. So who's the hypocrite? There really is nothing to fear. You take certain safety measures to keep your channel clear. You have a security team. We all have that. Whenever you increase your your expansion of what you allow into you okay so you're you don't know everything i don't know everything i learn every single day i increase my ability to take in new information every single day 
in doing that, I also increase my security and I also increase the levels of security that I add because there are dark and nefarious beings out there that want to dim my light. They're not going to succeed. I might have some attacks. I handle the attacks and I keep moving forward. It's not a end all be all. So if you're still super uncomfortable with even the thought of communicating with your own familiar guides that have transitioned and are there for you, you have a considerable amount of shadow work to do. And I invite you to get started with a QET session. If you're comfortable with it, if you're inquisitive about it and your mind is already like, I sure do miss mom. Mom died however many years ago. I would love to hear from her. Well, understand that that's a soul that has a that has the ability to choose. And mom may not have chosen to connect with earth family once she transitioned. That's up to them. But if she did, there's really no harm in that. Okay? There really is no harm in that. So stop with the fear mongering. Stop with the dogma. Stop with the indoctrination. I don't have any time for that. We are higher consciousness beings. We are on a trajectory to be leaders in new earth. And I need you to step out of the fear cycle and the fear loop and understand that things are much, much bigger and much more in-depth complicated than any religion has ever taught you because they have dumbed it down to you to be sheep for them. That is plain and simple, exactly how it is. We are humans. We are humanity. All those edits and religions were created by mankind. Man, not the divine. I will now get off my soapbox about that. So when you are ready for that clarity and you're ready for that discipline and you're ready to move forward in your spiritual initiation, calling in Archangel Gabriel is a good positive step. The fourth ray of harmony empowers us to complete that spiritual initiation. It has nothing to do with religion. Spirituality has nothing to do with religion. They are far apart, in my opinion. But you may have a soul contract that keeps you embedded in certain religions for a certain time period because you are then called to recognize the gnosis, the truth that comes within your soul and stand in your truth and help others see the light. That could be. And if that's the case, we need you. We absolutely need more of that. Okay, back to the fourth ray of harmony. Any conflict you experience now serves your divine purpose. Any conflict you experience now deserve, it serves your divine purpose and it deserves recognition. Not to just blow it off events in our lives that we see as trying difficult traumatic uh, friction conflicts they're occurring for us to evolve for us to have a greater expansion for us to learn how to be more higher consciousness than lower consciousness to have be um approaching these conflicts and these these trials from a heart space versus a mind space where we are looking for the greater good and the lessons for all within to rise above versus just revenge or to exact some sort of um, leverage there. It will eventually become the fuel you need to be born anew. And that's very, very true, right? So true. Where what we think we know, because everyone has taught this, they've all been carrying this, this totem for forever. So preschool, elementary school, high school, college, everything, our parents, everywhere we went, church, all the organizations, they all push the same doctrine, right? All came from the same place. That's why it's all the same. And it's not from source creator. So whenever we realize and start to remember who and what we are, why we're here, why we raised our hand, we do become born anew because we're born in the new light of truth. And we escape the shadows of the lies that we have been living in for however long. 
Something negative will be transformed into something positive. The Archangel Gabriel helps you to receive the blessings of the fourth ray of harmony now. When the fourth ray of harmony is active in your life, you are approaching a spiritual initiation, which creates a whole new person, a new you. Reborn, rebirth, endings and beginnings. Initiation may begin with feeling torn between two choices or two realities. And this is quite often the case. We see this all the time. You may wonder if you have what it takes to get through this. And the answer is you absolutely do. As you discover your strength to be patient with the process rather than trying to force an outcome prematurely, eventually you will outgrow the conflict altogether, emerging as a wiser and more powerful you. And that is a byproduct of shadow work. When you, and I use it as an example all the time. When I went into my shadow work journey, the first time I was healing from some major events in my life. And I did what I needed to do to get through to like be functional again and smile again and have like laughter again. But I didn't really deal with it all fully and completely. And so years later, about eight years later, I think, I really dug into all of that. And once I truly healed, the triggers no longer had power. They know I was no longer triggered because I had healed the source of the pain. So you do come out of it wiser. If nothing else, not responding to triggers that are, you know, detrimental to your journey and will definitely set you back and give you more shadow work that you have to process. Many try to force their evolution. They become matrix minded. They want the list given to them. They're like, okay, I did this today and I did this today. And I did. And so tomorrow I'm going to do this. And it's really not up to this to decide what you're going to do tomorrow. It's not. If your being is still in conflict over something that you feel like up here, you're just done with it because you're just tired of it. It doesn't mean that you've worked through the energetic processes that need to be worked through to fully and completely heal. And so your Dharma for the next day is going to be like, just be and let things process. That's just, That's the universe's way of saying you're not done with what you've been working on. And you've got to fully and completely heal. So you got to go through it to get through it. You can't rush it. Whenever you're trying to force things, it makes your journey full of obstacles, full of roadblocks, full of U-turns. You definitely feel like the universe is working against you because it is. It's trying to wake you up to go with the flow, to let go of the control you think you have on things so that you can be in tuned and connected to the energy flowing through you and allow that to guide your next steps. You will have gained a positive outcome from what was once considered to be a negative situation. And that is the shift in perspective, the paradigm shift that comes with shadow work, where you may go into it feeling completely victimized by this person, this person, and this person. And when you go through the events, you realize that you played a role in all of those events taking place. And through those events, you learned A, B, and C. And without that event, you would have never learned A, B, and C. And for that, you're, grat you're, grat you're grateful and you give gratitude. And so that gives you wisdom. That elevates your consciousness. That's how it works. So if you don't feel different, then you haven't fully processed it in a way that actually benefits your growth and, and your actual healing. That's really important. <clears throat> Flow gradually brings you to the energy required to the spiritual initiation that is meant for you. Big clue there. Your spiritual journey is not going to look like everyone else's. It may not look like anyone else's, and that's okay. My spiritual journey definitely does not look like 
other people's spiritual journey. There are some consistencies. There are some, some things that, that are similar, but I really do and have had a very, uh, one of those like lightning activations and my life made a 180 degree turn. And I have been happier than I have ever been and more peace and more love and more calm, more calm than my being than I have ever had in my life in this life stream. So proof positive. <clears throat> when the fourth ray of harmony becomes stronger in your soul, you will avoid becoming scattered out of balance and swinging from one extreme to the other over thoughts, actions, and emotions caused by exterior events. This is also a byproduct of shadow work. I really hope you're understanding how shadow work is beneficial for you. Yes, you have a dark night of the soul. Yes, it sucks. Yes, it's a pill, but it is not impossible. It is not. And it's also for your benefit. You will need to keep grounding yourself and being moderate rather than all or nothing in your life choices. And this will create your successful outcome more swiftly than trying to force something to happen immediately because your egoic brain says, let's do this right now. This can be delicate and it requires discernment. For my choices, I go within to my higher self. Um, I'm very keen of what I'm not neutral on and I ask others to ask questions for me because they don't have a dog in the fight. They're not um, attached to the outcome, the answer of that query. And so their answers should be uh, received better than if you're not neutral. <clears throat> I also ask, is something in my highest and best good? Whether I have permission for it or not, that's the first answer. Then the second question is, is, is it in my highest and best good to do things the way I think I should be doing them? Now, that's different for everyone. The, the answer can be yes, but not today. The answer could be yes, but not the, not the way you planned on doing it. So you do have to dig a little, little deeper into those um, layers of permission and confirm with those others that are clear. That's why it's really good to have a support system that you can communicate with like healing disclosures. The challenge and the gift with the fourth ray of harmony is the increased sensitivity to beauty. It engenders music, takes on a whole new life and emotional depth. The beauty or the chaos of your environment and even the colors you wear has more impact on you than usual. You can use this increased sensitivity to your advantage by choosing art, music, colors, so that you feel good. And that happened for me like right away, right away. I started wearing uh, my black tourmaline bracelet and my silver bracelet. And then those are a must. And then I'll add to it. There are days that um, I wear this guy. Uh, and that's a, a very powerful protection bracelet, but <clears throat> I always wear my onk and I make sure that it's very well protected because people see it in video and think that they can harm me through it and they can't. So do what makes you feel empowered. Do what makes your energy really align because there are crystals, essential oils, um, colors, music, high hertz music is my favorite. I really, really enjoy that. Um, and it just really does go help me to go with the flow. Cause I get in tuned to that frequency and that that's where I'm receiving in information that just feels great. So whenever you are recognizing your body cues, don't ignore them. We've been taught to ignore our body cues, right? So you put something on, it's, it's really less about how you think it makes you look. It should be about how it makes you feel. Don't wear clothing or shoes or anything, makeup, anything in your hair that doesn't make you feel empowered. If you feel conscious about what other people might be saying that makes you in a self-conscious way, like you don't feel empowered, don't do it. You have the choice to put that back in the closet, donate it. Like there are things I got rid of. I'm like, I don't even know why I ever got this. What was I thinking? 
Then there's some things that I, I liked the way that other people responded to them because they were flashy, but I was never really comfortable wearing it. I was wearing it for all the wrong reasons. Got rid of it. It makes such a huge difference. The mainstream is still operating in a fear-based energy. With increased sensitivity, you can at times be more affected by this. If you are experiencing increased negativity, depression, doubt, fear, or emotional instability, this is likely why. You can overcome this without shutting down. When you sense it happening, respond in a, in a loving discipline like meditation, journaling, dance, creative art, listen to music, exercise, have a salt bath, spend time in nature and bring yourself back into balance. And this is huge right now because there's so much volatility all over the world and everything's being shoved down your throat on all the different social spaces. And, you know, at, at a certain point in time, we have to be like, okay, that's enough rage for the day. Like, I, I just don't want any more of that. Another aspect is when you go through your QET session with me, I'm going to give you cloaks that help you navigate the world. One of them is an empath shield. And it allows you to continue to be an empath without absorbing everyone's toxic emotions. It's really important. It's very vital. And that can be boosted um, you know, on an as-needed basis. This ray has a special connection to the arts and guides you to create. You're encouraged to trust your own creative energy, to enjoy it and use it to help yourself heal. And perhaps others will heal with you. And I know um, there was a moment um, last, let me think. I think it was last fall, maybe summer. Yeah. And I, I went I left one soul family member's place. I'd been there for a couple of weeks and then I went to another and I got there and she goes, source said you need to have a glass of wine and paint. <laughs> and I had not painted in many decades. Now, and I was in high school, I thought I was going to go to art school. I was all into painting and charcoals and all sorts of stuff. I had not given myself permission or the opportunity to do any of that in a very long time. And so I sat down being an obedient child of source creator, mother Sophia, and I painted and I painted with watercolor, which I used to never like, and it was calming and peaceful and encouraging and relaxing. And it was all the things I needed. And had I been listening to this creature up here, I would have dissed that. I'd have been like, no, I got too much stuff to do, but I listened all that other stuff waited. You know, I sat and painted for probably a good hour, hour and a half. And you know how, whenever you're been on the road and you get somewhere, there's a lot of stuff to do. It all waited. No, nobody came along and <laughs> did that for me, but it also was not a detriment for it to wait. And I was in a better energetic position to tackle that stuff. Once I gave myself a little bit of creative outlet and found a little harmony again, when Archangel Gabriel enters your life, there will be an emphasis on the use of sound for healing and balance. So the words you use like affirmations and invocations will be very powerful. And so will be the music you listen to. I love music. I don't really like silence. I like to be outside without music most of the time but sometimes I play a hand pan when I'm outside and the birds really like it the animals really like it too but um I'm frequently listening to high frequency music um it is my go-to it helps me process it helps the my pets energy and processing things and it's just a wonderful addition to my daily um, energy practices. So I, I welcome you to try that. I try all the, uh, the things that interest me. I find them usually on YouTube. Um, the music you use, the sound will help you balance and restore your energy. If you're listening to things that don't make you feel better, this is just like picking that shirt or those pair of shoes. If it doesn't make you feel good, don't engage with it change the channel, change the music. 
you may be listening to music that you've listened to your whole life and it invigorated you at some point in time. You loved it and you know it backwards and forwards, but now you don't have the same feeling for it. <clears throat> that's okay. That's okay. Try new things. That, that's exactly what growth and evolution and expansion is about. You'll feel happier. You'll find life is simpler. You may not immediately solve an issue because you listen to that, but it, you may start to process it in a way that allows you and yourself, the knowing resolution is on its way. The world we're taught is matter, right? It's the form. We're not taught about the elements. We're not taught about the forces of the elements. The movement is not by force. The movement is by flow. Movement, growth, trauma, healing, it's all energy, it's all frequency, and it's all vibration. If you are serious about your healing, if you're ready to let all that stuff go, that it makes you feel so inadequate and disempowered, do it. What are you waiting for? We now recognize that sound, frequency, and vibration with our energy can unravel the darkest and most painful wounds leading to freedom and soaring energy. That's beautiful. When you're ready to in evoke Archangel Gabriel's fourth ray of harmony, this is the invocation, and I will do mine with you now. I... Andalusia, queen of royal orders and spiritual gifts, now accept of my own free will the blessing and grace of the fourth ray of harmony. I call upon the grace and assistance of the universe and Archangel Gabriel to help me find balance, wisdom, and creative approaches in all areas of my life. I ask for unconditionally loving assistance to outgrow problems in my life. I ask for the divine mercy, compassion, and tenderness to help me grow into all that I am divinely destined to be. May the art and beauty within me find authentic expression in the world. May I be held from within and grounded in my center as I approach the portal of initiation. May the unconditionally loving masters and angels that serve on this divine ray bring it into the hearts of all. sticky papers bring it into the hearts of all beings for the greatest good through divine mercy will and grace so be it if you feel called to get your qet session to get on the road of these activations to get started healing your inner child to have um, divine masculine divine feminine activations maybe you want to have an isis activation maybe you want to connect with your pleiadian family we have Maropa activations for that. Um, we offer all sorts of things and we are helping people every single day find their true north, their true center. VioletLotusEnergy.com is where you want to visit to sign up for your sessions. You have to do QET first. And once you integrate that, it's about seven to 14 days. Then you can dive into other activations. Telegram, there's a link in the description of this video. You can come to Healing Disclosures on Telegram. And that is a safe space where you can dive into what are we talking about with all this shadow work? And how do I talk to my higher self? And what do I need to do? And how do I use a pendulum? Like all sorts of stuff. No judgment completely safe and then truth resonates podcast drops every friday morning um usually 6 a.m my weeks have been kind of getting away from me and this past friday i don't think i got that to go live until maybe 8 or 8 30 but on fridays <laughs> fridays is whenever it drops friday mornings is whenever it drops i do my absolute very very best i stay pretty busy with activations um this past weekend, I was activated further. I'm in the process of integrating uh, Master Healer activations from Archangel, I'm sorry, Ascendant Master Hilarion. He was the Supreme Healer in Atlantis. And uh, we had some coordination of work and skills in that time frame. And he has come back into my life to help me remember some of those things and align me to those gifts again. So I am very grateful for that. It took a lot out of me. I was zapped. I felt like I had to just sleep, 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 which I did. I'm very grateful for. 
please stay focused on hydration, rest, meditation, and do what feels good to you overall. I'll see you again next time for the fifth ray. Take care.